everyone, and happy Friday. Today is June 23rd. Thank you so much for joining me for live stream number 17. Today we're going to talk about pod lists. So this was a question I got if it was possible to uh, to create a pod list inside of Fusion 360. So if you have multiple uh, components, how can you display them so you know how many there are of each? And that's what we're going to attack today. Now, I'm just going to switch over to Fusion here quickly because I got to do a little, I got to admit something. So um, I was planning on doing this part list and uh, then I joined my YouTube or jumped in on YouTube this morning and lot of behold that, um, that Jimmy DeResta, uh, who I met at Sandra's uh, open house, he's a great guy, has a great Great, great YouTube channel. Uh, he actually had a video this morning about how to create his, um, how he created his his uh, shop tables for his for his new shop. If you don't follow uh, Jimmy DeResta, uh, I would definitely uh, recommend that that you do that. But the funny thing was that I was thinking uh, when I now that I had decided that I was going to do a video about. Um, doing pod list i was thinking hmm something like a table or development might be uh, might be a good a good idea and uh, then lord of behold that this morning uh jimmy posted this awesome uh, video i definitely recommend that you uh, that you check out uh uh jimmy Doresta's uh channel um and uh and and, and you know uh, subscribe to to that one he has like over a million subscribers in his channel he is uh he's awesome uh, but i didn't ask for permission uh, from uh, from Jimmy, but I hope it's okay. I kind of like stole somewhat the layout of his uh, of his table. It's not quite his table, but uh, in the end, he spray canned his uh, uh, logo on, and I thought that was kind of funny to uh, to put on here. So I hope that I hope if if Jimmy sees this, I hope that that is okay. Um, actually, if you guys want, this could be a video by itself on how would you model uh, a table up like that. But whatever. All right, we can see we already got a bunch of people in here. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining. If you're watching the recording, thank you for taking the time to do that also. Uh, yeah, so today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, part lists. Um, we're going to use uh, Jimmy Drastas. Check out his YouTube channel. It's also the link to his YouTube channel is also down in the description. Uh, so we're going to use uh, his table. Just want to kind of like quickly show how that works inside of Fusion 360. Also, uh, yesterday, in yesterday's uh, live stream, where I was talking about the what's new for June, um, I had also placed the link for the free CNC handbook down in the description area, and I saw that a bunch of people actually went down and grabbed that. So if you did not do that, that's still down. I'm going to leave that down in the description of these live streams. So if you have not gotten your free CNC handbook, go down in the description area, click the link, you get to my blog at camstuff.com, and you can download your free copy right there. Um, oh, and there was one guy who asked, because you have to put in your email address to get the, the PDF, and he was asking if he's now was going to get uh, any spam. Uh, I have had over, I don't know, 2,000, 3,000 downloads of uh, the CNC handbook, and I can assure you that nobody have gotten any spam email, so you can, you can very safely put in your email address there. Um, also, my... Um, my email address is also down in the description area. If there's anything you want to see in the live stream, go ahead and do that. All right, a lot of talking. Let's jump in here and talk a little bit about part list inside of Fusion 360. So again, Jimmy, I hope that it's okay that I uh, I used your uh, kind of like the inspiration of your your uh, shop table. So uh, to create a part list inside of a Fusion, I have uh, created this with. Uh, you got to use components. Um, in here, I'm pretty sure that you cannot use bodies at all. There's got to be different components. And this maybe is also why it might make sense uh, that I create a video kind of like putting how I put this together. You let me know if you want that. Um, so uh, I'm going to go into the drawing environment here and I'm going to say from design and you get prompted with a little uh, menu here, you know, uh, play around with the different settings in here. So I'm just going to go into the drawing. And it comes in with the first view here. Now I probably want like something like the top view. And and to create the part list, I'm not gonna create any dimensions in here. I'm just gonna place this one here. Um, and actually, 
I want it to be shaded. If I click uh, if I click visible edges, you will see that now it kind of like ends up like normal 2D drawing environment. Um, if we go back in here, I want it to be shaded, right? So we can see that that looks right there. Uh, now you can see the, the rest of the logo. We can rotate, so you can click up here. Now this is not uh, this is not gonna be a drawing about or a video about drawings really. See if I rotate it the right way. Ugh, of course I didn't. <laughs> if there's if there's two chances for me, I always pick the wrong one. So like that one, rotate. I'm not sure how it's gonna. All right, so now it's just gonna be like that, right? There we go. Uh, so we can do that. Uh, we can also move the table up a little bit like that. We might want a projected view of it also. Now where we at it, so we can kind of like see the side there. Okay. And uh, we could also, we could also make a isometric view of it like this. And then we could actually, if we place this, we could again use the rotate like I did before to get it in the right direction. Let's see here. We'll do that. Oh, and when you rotate around here, the further out you, you move your mouse, see how my mouse, right now I'm right where I decided that my tr rotation point was going to be. If you move further out, then it's easier to control. So that's just um, a little trick. Oh, that's good right there, I think. <laughs> Perfect. All right, so right now I'm just kind of like making something that could be a overview of this. Um, to create the part list, uh, you click up here on part list, and then the part list appears, and it can snap into to corners. And um, then you will see that we have the part list here. Uh, now, the part list um, instead of Fusion 360, so you can see here, we got the first column shows you the items. So that's five different items in this assembly. Uh, and you will see that, by the way, if I just zoom out a little bit, you'll see over here to the left that I have all the, the features in that, you know, it's kind of like the model environment now inside of a drawing. Uh, I have uh, quantities in here. So how many there are of each. Uh, there's part numbers. This is something that I created. I'm gonna show you that in a second. Uh, I also added descriptions and then you uh, have materials in here. The way that, that you control the part list uh, is in uh, your originally assembly in here. So uh, if for example, if we go back to the part list, doo -doo -doo -doo, uh, you will see here that item number five, quantity number one, that is actually the table top of the work table. Um, and you will see I have a, a size of it it shows up as steel because that's the default inside of Fusion 360. Um, but it's actually not steel, right? It's going to be, well, I don't know what Jimmy, Jimmy probably, I don't know much about wood, but Jimmy probably can tell what's the right thing to, to use here. I decided it was plywood, but it's probably wrong. But uh, what you do is if you right click, so I'm back in assembly mode. If I right click in here, uh, you have uh, properties uh, in here. Um, and if I click on properties just for a second, you will see here is where the part number is that you saw on the drawing. Uh, I all, here's the name of the part, how it appears here. So the part number appeared on the, on the drawing. Go back to the drawing. Uh, that's the part number right there. Okay. And then the, that's the part number. The part name only appears inside of, uh, of the assembly level. And then in the description, I put in the size of it. Now, I got the size of this right, this is pretty cool, right from in here. Uh, I had to type it in, but that, the sizes for all these were right in here, so I didn't have to go out and measure or anything. So that's absolutely, that's absolutely awesome. Now, the, the material, the one I actually want to change, you don't do that in properties. That is actually coming out of the physical material. So be aware of inside of Fusion, there is appearances and there is a physical material. Now appearances is just the look. Uh, so uh, you can drag and drop different kinds 
of materials on something. So right now I can drive a MDF board on here and, uh, and then you can see that it changes appearances right here. But um, that is only like the image. It's not really doing anything to the model. It's just kind of like how it looks. Um, but what, the, what shows up in our pod list uh, as steel is actually the physical material that Fusion would use if we, for example, went into the simulation space uh, that is inside of Fusion. So that is the physical material. So I can click here. We'll open up this dialog. And there's also all kinds of different woods in here. Uh, and again, I am, you know, I just came up with something. Uh, <laughs> so uh, forgive me. But I mean, you can take something like a piece of plywood, click, uh, select that. Um, and put that on there, hit close, and you'll actually see that it changes the, that also changes the appearance. But I do believe that I can, so, oh, so let's just save this for right now. Go up here and hit save. And you should always leave a comment, right? Whoops, like that. And then if we're going to the drawings, now you will see that it hasn't changed, but notice that down here we get the that something the reference changed, and you also get this button up here in the upper right. So if I click on that one, that should update everything, and uh, now we should uh, see that it becomes plywood sheeting in here. So that's how you can control uh, these materials. And if we go back into the our arrested table, um, I can now go in and I can change. I should be able to overwrite that appearance again. Uh, and then I have that new appearance um, in here. So that's how you create uh, these part lists. So I think that the most important thing to remember is that uh, in here, you control it from within the, the assembly itself by going, so if I go into this, this square tubing here, what is one of these uh, bars right here? If I right click and I go into properties for that one, you will see I type, this is just, I just made up some numbers <laughs> and uh, I gave it a, a, a name. And then I, like I said, I stole the dimensions right from the, the bounding box, which is kind of cool. And you can see here, you get a lot of other information, right? And this is part of the whole material thing that it knows it's a physical steel. So this is the, the, the mass, the volume and all that stuff. And we go back into our plywood that we just changed. We should also see now that that is plywood uh, and that will change uh, things here. So I hope that uh, I hope that that was was helpful. Um, and uh, I hope that Jimmy is okay with me uh, me stealing his uh, kind of like his layout. Well, it's not a perfect layout, so his his table is actually a little bit bigger, I think, and absolutely uh, much cooler too. So um, that was really what I planned on on showing here today. Um, keeping it somewhat short here. I can see that we got a bunch of people in from Finland. That's awesome. Thank you so much, everybody, for, for jumping in here on uh, on um, this Friday and uh, and just jumping in. That's awesome. Got 36 people watching. And, of course, this is being recorded, too. But it's cool, too. If you're watching the recording, i love to get your comments down in the description area. If you like this stuff, if this is good stuff for you, do me a favor and hit the uh, the thumbs up. If you, if you don't, if you don't like it, well, put the thumbs down. I mean... You know, that's 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 how that works. Um, again, Jimmy Deresta's, uh channel, it's down in the description area. Go and check that out. And, uh, you know, I might create a video where I show you how to put this together because there's a couple of cool little functions in there that you may or may not uh, know about. I'm going to do as I normally do here. I am going to end the, the broadcast so we uh, get the video up on YouTube. And then I'm going to jump into... Uh, the chat and uh, and chat with the people who are in there. So Friday, June 23rd, it is live stream number 17. Thank you so much for taking the time to join. I hope that you got something out of it. And uh, until the next time, have an awesome, awesome weekend.